And we are back. And as promised on line one is uh, our Congressman Jody Arrington. Uh, good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Matt. Happy good morning. Valentine's. And on this Valentine's Day, I want to say I heart West Texas. <laughs> well, and yeah, don't we all? I'll tell you. So have you, have you bought Mrs. Uh, Arrington a, a Valentine yet? You know what? I have not. And I'm trying to scramble here this morning. Please don't, any of your listeners, do not text, email, or otherwise get a hold of my wife before uh, <laughs> I get at least, th- I have 30 minutes after this call to try to, you know, scramble. Fresh flowers are always good, and I'm telling you. I know, but what's but, open? They love it. I mean, what, it's it's uh, it's 808 there, but still. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've got time. As long as somebody doesn't wrap me out. <laughs> well, Congressman, <laughs> is there anything, anything at all interesting happening in Washington, D.C. these days? Well, <laughs> what's interesting is that absent the impeachment uh, scheme and the obsession over impeaching this president, the Democrats are just scrambling to figure out what their game plan is. That's and and we do have a few things going on that are productive. We just passed uh, the prohibition against uh, supplies medical billing out of my uh, in a bipartisan fashion out of my committee, and we just kicked off our uh, rural health care task force, uh, which I chair with along with the Democrat. Uh, so there are some things that are productive. I mean, I'm trying to keep my eyes on the on the balls that will uh, matter and will affect my constituents. But the bigger picture is you got a 2020 election. You've got no plans and no agenda uh, with the Democrats uh, at at, at a high level. And uh, I don't suspect we're going to be able to get a lot done as a result. Well, I'll tell you, Congressman, I'm wondering if that's all a ruse. I'm thinking the, the, the Democrats couldn't be that dumb. I'm, I'm beginning to think it's it's a plan on their part, but let me let me uh, run this by you. Uh, one of the things that I got out of the uh, the caucus, which was a giant mess, and then the New Hampshire primary is not so much. Well, I guess Bernie's rise is the the big story, but the biggest story to me, and tell me I'm wrong, but was the number of people that turned out and voted for Trump in That's record right. numbers. That that's the one that hit me and says, "Wow, uh, absolutely, yeah." Look, he's he's breaking records in turnouts. You look at, even but, but the polls oh, are not reflecting it. Well, the, the, you're you're saying the media is not reflecting it. Well, the polls that that they're reporting. Oh yeah, well, look, the the people. I reported this during my hearing on. Uh, ways and means on tax uh, reform that the Democrats were trying to um, attack it. And, and the, 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 the reality is 90 percent of the American people, the highest ever in Gallup poll history, have said they're satisfied. Eighty six percent of Democrats are satisfied. Over half of Democrats are very satisfied. Sixty five percent roughly support the president of Americans, support the president's economic policies. Look, when you have more jobs and you have people to fill them, when you've created yeah, an good environment thing. for millions of jobs, wages are up, you know, lowest unemployment for women, African-American, Hispanics, it's really hard to argue uh, that you're not better off today as a result of this president and Republican policy. Yeah, but now what we're hearing is the, is this chatter of, this is Obama, this is Obama, he's the one that did this. Actually, yeah. I actually heard a talking head, a lady on uh, one of the two crazy networks the other day that actually said all of this has to do with Obama. This is all Obama. She said Donald Trump has nothing to do with this economy. She actually said that, and I'm, and I'm quoting it almost verbatim, but... It seems like they they have they have no, they have to destroy this economy some way or another. Well, they tried to destroy it with all of the uh, big government solutions to everything. They tried to destroy it by saying banning uh, fossil energy development. You know, they banned fracking. They stopped pipeline development. The the underpinnings and West Texas is is leading the way in this regard. But the underpinnings to this this red-hot economy 
is an affordable, abundant supply of of energy yeah. that's coming that's coming from energy production centers like West Texas. So that's that's a big part of it. Well, Obama wanted to just ban it all together, and uh, you know, on top of you know Obamacare, which doubled premiums and deductibles, so so health care costs went through the roof. Um, I mean, their policies were big government. Bernie Sanders' policies will double down uh, because they're socialist policies, and they'll further destroy the, the, the economy if they can. All we're doing, Dave, is restoring freedom back to the marketplace. Exactly. Freedom, freedom in the, by giving people more, more uh, purchasing power, letting them keep more of their hard-earned money, and freedom from high regulations and, and, the, and burdensome tax codes that made us the highest taxed businesses in the, in the world. And that's, that's not consistent with what's made America great over the years. So we're restoring free markets, free states, free peoples, and, it's, and, and, every, and everybody's responding and the economy's responding in a positive way. Congressman, um, now you, you get to at least uh, be in Washington, kind of hear what's going on behind the scenes. Um, I know that some of the Republicans seem like they think that it's possible that the House could be flipped. Are there any Democrats out there worried about that, especially with uh, census and, um, it, you know, in the states, even some of the states may lose some some Democrats? Absolutely, they're worried. Uh, the, 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 the energy and the enthusiasm is is well on the side of Republicans, again, because of the, the things I mentioned and the polls indicate as much. Um, you, you, I've mentioned before that we have uh, 30 uh, Democrats who won in the midterms in 2018. They won in, in districts that Trump won. And I think that they're going to have a hard time keeping their seats. We need 20 seats a net to flip the House back to Republicans. And uh, the, the, there is a clear path to a Republican majority, and the momentum is, is squarely on the side of, of this president, who's at the top of the ticket, obviously, and Republicans. The recent wins on trade with USMCA and China were significant, and I think you're going to see this economy, which there'll be a little bit of a lag in terms of the, the uh, performance impact of the economy, but it's just going to get better. And while Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats would like to take credit for USMCA, she really used it as a bargaining chip to get votes for impeachment. This president will own that. Republicans will own the economy. Uh, and and I, think it's, I think at the end of the day, people are asking that question, am I better off today as a result of these policies in this president? Even if they don't like him, even if they don't like his style, I think they have to be honest and say, yeah, I like where I am. Yeah, I, I, I think better. it's. I think this. What what may very well happen is it just depresses the Democrat vote, and they don't. They just don't go to the polls and vote on election day, uh, for the hardcore Democrats. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, it is uh, seven sixteen now, uh, Congressman. Can we take a quick break and come back and talk more? You bet. All right. You bet. And we are back here on 95.1 FM and 790 AM, KFYL Mornings. Dave and Matt on your radio. And again, online with us is uh, our Congressman Jody Arrington. Hey, uh, Congressman, we have a, a texter that wants to know if you can introduce a bill to get rid of real ID. Of real ID? Real ID. Right, it's, it's the a thing that, that now uh, the federal government says that you have to have, I think, a birth certificate on file um, before you can get on the airlines, and so you have to have a little star in Texas that says that uh, it, that's what I understand it to be. Yeah. Well, hmm. tell him I will take that into consideration. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm not. Look, I just I'll tell you something though about IDs that I just got involved in. I was a, a, a co-sponsor to legislation that prohibits uh, folks who are in our country illegally. From getting a driver's license, I think it's I think it's unconscionable that we would um, that we would enable the illegal immigration to this country, the violation of our immigration laws, by allowing folks and legitimizing folks, uh, in, in, by allowing them to have a driver's license. Again, we should treat them humanely. We should 
take care to provide basic needs at the border. But uh, this, a lot of what's happening is as a result of our enabling policies, uh, and that's one of them. So w- just it jogged my, my thoughts that this week I co-sponsored uh, a piece of legislation on something related to IDs. But I'll take his his. Uh, his consider his uh, recommendation. Yeah, under it. I so, think it, it says also ask the difference in a state, national, and U.S. citizen. So I, yeah, that's well, that's probably exactly what he's talking about. Tell me, me, Congressman, are we making any real uh, difference in in uh, illegal crossings at the border? We are, but when I say we, let's be clear, it's it's President Trump, and, and now I've supported him every step of the way. Um, some members have and some members have not. He's having to do really tough things that are being criticized by the media, like his expedited deportation, for example. A lot of people think that's cruel, but folks who have had due process, and these folks have, and they've been here over the last couple of years, so the courts have already rendered them, uh, heard their case, and rendered them here illegal. Uh, illegally without any merit to whatever asylum claim, and and they're being deported. Well, that's the law of the land. My goodness, I don't think we should have to debate that. But between that and some of the negotiations he's had with Mexico and other countries to keep folks there while we process their claims have caused the illegal crossings to drop uh, for eight straight months. It's down over 75 percent since May. And again, this president uh, has delivered on his promise, and he's taken this issue of securing the border and stopping illegal immigration head on. And 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 I support him 100 percent and been with him every step of the way. So, Congressman, one of the questions I was going to ask you was about the War Powers Resolution. Um, I know that uh, it seems to me to be very political after Soleimani, uh, which to me was a big win for U.S., but uh, the Democrats disagree, apparently. Um, but the, this War Powers Resolution, this, the Senate now has passed, and, and they were able to pull some of the Republicans. Uh, what exactly does that do, and um, is, is, is it important, or is it something that, that shouldn't be going through? So let me just hit a few highlights here. It's important that we constantly look at the authorization for military force and that we expand or contract it uh, according to the threats. And I think that's a legitimate point, that we always need to be looking at it, and we we don't need to let it get stale. But what the Democrats did on the heels of the president's strike that killed the worst terrorist on the face of the planet and, the, and, and one with 600-plus American soldiers' blood on his hands, it was purely political. It was to try to make it look like this president did something wrong. And the problem with the piece of legislation that passed uh, by Democrats mostly um, was that it, it, it forces this president, it basically ties his hands, to do anything to stop an imminent threat against our military that are deployed overseas. And it forces them to come back and ask Nancy Pelosi and Congress uh, for permission. And I don't believe any president has had to have has had those restrictions when it comes to imminent threat. The president did the right thing. He's been reluctant in using military force. Uh, what he did was ultimately deter Iran and um, – and what he's done to rip up the Iranian nuclear deal, which was a sham deal, is also keeping America's uh, Americans safe because it was a sham deal. So it was a politically motivated deal to make this president look like he did the wrong thing. And, and quite frankly, shame on them for doing that, because President Obama uh, took out a lot of terrorists through drone strikes, a whole lot more than this president. And nobody, no Republican ever put some jicky legislation down to make it look like he was doing something uh, untoward or un-American. He was doing the right thing when he did that. So was President Trump. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, is it, so, Congressman, we only have about a minute left. Is there something you'd want to say? Well, yeah, I'll tell you what's been on my heart. I'm talking to my, con- my uh, colleagues about this as we prepare for 2020 and in the hopes that we will get the House back. We've got to pick up the fiscal mantle, the fiscally responsible mantle again, and rein in the spending, 
balance our budget, put us on good financial footing for the next generation. This $23 trillion in debt is, is horrible. It's dangerous. And uh, we cannot yeah. swing and miss. Well, Congressman, the, thank you so much. Order. Thank you so much yeah. for calling in this thank morning. You. Thank you. Interesting, interesting. Okay. And we'll uh, be back with more in a moment.